Yeah, I'm losing my then, edge. Michael, how do you use standard deviations? I, I, I calculate a lot of standard deviations I have since um, about 2012, 2013, when I was back at uh, university, as the Europeans would call it. And um, and uh, what do you do with it? Like you have you have a data set, I'm told, and then you run a standard deviation on that data set, and you also get this other the sidekick of the standard deviation, the mean. And from that, it's almost like a summary of the data. You know? So, do you want to give uh, kind of your take on what a standard deviation is here? Sure. So, a lot of financial mathematics use standard deviations uh, in a multitude of ways. Some people use it as a measure of risk. Uh, you know, how much an investment can move against you or your expectations of, of movement going forward. We like to use it on the Taste of Trade show as a indicator of expected movement for scalping purposes. And I think that's probably the most useful way we utilize standard deviation in our daily trading. Absolutely. And so what does that all mean? We'll get to in a second, but I just want to highlight the last week here for people who utilize standard deviations in trading, this is a beautiful thing, which is to say you've got four markets, metals, two variations of equities there with the SM75 being a broad equity market index that includes energies, financials, industrials, materials, and tech. Then you have the tech market specifically in purple, the sticks. And then you have a currency market there in orange. And when I say this is beautiful for standard deviation traders, mean reversion traders is another uh, synonym there for uh, that type of trading strategy. I'm speaking to the fact that all of these markets, Michael, close within a percentage point of where they were last week, but from last week to this week have moved up 2%, up 3%, back down a couple percentage points, oscillating around unchanged uh, on any given day, giving you a bunch of opportunity, which lends to bringing in the standard deviation calculation to your trading. Because when I say mean reversion, I'm speaking about a mean in these markets that the market ends up coming back to. And so the mean for me, from my time at the Board of Trade until now, how I think about trading any market, the mean is zero, net change of zero, no change in the market. And so when you have a market that is up 60 cents, 70 cents, a full dollar, a mean reversion trade would be to sell it, thinking that it's going to come back down to that mean of zero net change. And, and that's why a mean reversion trader, a standard deviation trader loves this. You know, you've got this metals market up 3% comes all the way back down to unchanged up a percentage point and then comes back a little bit here. Uh, yesterday, you've got the sticks and the SM75 market here to varying degrees up 1% or 2 to 2.5% come all the way back to negative what one point for SM75 or or just completely unchanged. And then you've got this US dollar making new lows at the end of last week and then coming all the way back to being positive this week. That's what we mean by uh, mean reversion in these markets, right? Yep, exactly. And I think that data on the previous slide is close to close. You can even look at it high to low uh, intraday yesterday, for example, yep. we saw some very interesting moves in our stock index products, the small stock 75 and the small tech 60 mm -hmm. and small precious metals, where they actually opened lower, traded lower about that one standard deviation move and then came back to unchanged or even positive on the day in those three products. So you can look at it at a finer level, but you're looking for kind of the elasticity of price. When we move beyond the average, yeah. It's, it's possible that we come back to an average move. And I think this kind of relates to a lot of guys trade off uh, reversal strategies. You know, if something is down uh, pretty big, maybe they'll buy it in the expectation that it'll revert back. That's kind of a derivation of standard deviation scalping or, or intraday scalping. Yeah, Epps, I'm glad that you brought up that differing time frame because we're actually going to jump into an intraday example in our metals market over the last week, I want to show a couple intraday charts and, and show how uh, mean reversion or using standard deviations could have taken advantage of that. Um, but yeah, you're totally right. The time frame is up to you. You know, someone like Tom Sosnoff at Tasty Trade, he trades, you know, 30 day option strategies for the most part. And when he's looking for mean reversion, he probably doesn't use that term, but he'll look at something like, uh, you know, Apple that's maybe up for. Uh, a, a full month is up like 10% or something. And he 
then goes in there and what's he do usually is he'll sell calls against that with a 30 day time frame, thinking that at some point in the next 30 days, we're going to see a reversion of that 10% move. And then he's going to take off that short call for a profit. It's the same thing here on the future side when you're looking at daily moves, like Michael said, from close to close here. And we've seen a couple of great opportunities uh, recently, especially if you're looking at SPRE and SFX in opposing dire direction. Big up move uh, on the 8th if you sold it there on the 9th and then the following Monday, the 12th, uh, big reversion day to day. Similar here in SFX, big sell-off on that eighth and then a reversion over the next couple of uh, days there. But then also I will get into what's more intriguing to me and, and us uh, active traders is these this intraday movement. Because you have last Friday, just to walk you through SPRE uh, here as a primary example of what we were just looking at um, in a percentage chart. SPRE starts at 75 and then gets as high as 76 last Friday. And then on that Tuesday, you see a sell-off from 76 all the way down below $74. And even intraday, like Michael is speaking to, you see this bounce off of 73, uh, 75 back up to 74.25. The following day, Wednesday, you see another move back to $75. And so this is the type of thing that we're looking at when we talk about you know, a ton of opportunity in a market that hasn't gone anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's just to say that um, it, it, I don't want to have an opinion on metals. I don't want to say, oh, gold is going to 3000 or gold is going back down to 1000 And thus, I'm going to buy or sell SPRE here and just hold on to it for weeks and months. No, I'd rather say to myself, you know, I don't know where gold is going in the next uh, six months, but I just know what a big move is via these numbers here, these standard deviation values. And then I know how to employ them given these big moves that we're seeing back to back, huge rally, huge sell off, huge rally and sell off intraday. That's how you use these standard deviation uh, measures here when trading uh, markets actively. This is exactly the, the back and forth two sided action you want to see as an active trader. And having the numbers around it can just help tremendously when you're employing strategies like this, just collecting a few dollars here and there. And I was chewing on this analogy last week. We talk about sports sometimes on the show. I'm not a big sports guy. I play sports, but Frank, you're, you're a boxer. And I would imagine I've, I've watched a few boxing matches and it's not all that fun when one person just completely dominates the other person, like Apple going from a hundred to $150, right? You want a good, two-sided match where it's close and there's back and forth action. I would say the same for intraday active trading. You don't want something trending completely yeah. against you. You want a little back and forth, some jabs, some short punches, et cetera, where you can cl collect a few bucks uh, on the back and forth. And the indicators you put up in the actual, in the bell curve there, that's what you're going to use as a guide. Or we've even mentioned this, this dollar move in all the small exchange products that tends to be right at that one standard deviation level and you can use that as an indicator uh, to take the opposite side or to or to go with the trend if that's your style yeah i'm i'm glad that you bring that up michael because it is i mean whether you want to talk about uh sports and and the fact that uh, in the middle of a baseball game or in the middle of a football game or boxing match now the there's live betting that allows you to you know oh this team is up by three runs on this team oh i can bet on the other team now as the underdog just all they need to do is come back a little bit. Their odds, their odds will get back in line, and I can buy and sell live uh, betting intra game. There, same thing here, and same thing. Uh, an interesting concept as well is is people trying to make markets around the political race, mm -hmm. and you know, all politics aside, there's something that is tried and true in terms of strategy around uh, politics. And now we're getting pretty close to the election, but. What has occurred time and time again, I did some research for this a few months ago, uh, is is that through polls and, and everything else, the candidates switch sides mm -hmm. constantly. You know, aside from, you know, like one or two elections in every 10, um, there's a lot of Democrat leading and then Republican leading and then Democrat leading and then Republican leading. And, um, and, and so with stuff like predictit.org or other places, that are making markets around the election. You know, the last few months it's been interesting. Whenever you see that candidate get to you know sixty or sixty-five percent, 
uh, and the other one dropped down to 40 and 35 percent. There's a good reversion play in that mean over the last few months. Now, like I said, it's it's kind of gone because we only have about uh, two weeks until the election uh, comes to fruition. But yeah, no matter what the example is and no matter what the time frame is, there is going to be this mean reversion play aside from those one offs. Like I said, uh, a couple of in the last few decades where the Democrat or Republican started out leading in the polls and the gap just widened, widened, widened. And that's similar to, you know, your Tesla's where Tesla goes from 300 to 400 and then it just goes to 1200. And it's like, well, there's nothing I could have done there. There are plenty of those examples. But what's nice with the futures products that the small exchange provides here, Michael, is they're diversified markets. So you get away from that one off stock, uh, single stock or that one off commodity or one off currency in the SFX case, um, which I, of course, forgot to uh, update here. Pr Producer John is going to be mad at me. Um, but it allows for more back and forth when you diversify the markets like that. And that's what you want. You, you, when you're using standard deviations, it's, it's for back and forth markets that you can buy or sell uh, intraday, interday, intermonth, whatever the time frame uh, is there.